Welcome to Patrick's 53 on the road. Today we're in beautiful uh, Langley in Washington uh, State's Django Fest Northwest 2010. So that marked the 10 years anniversary of this beautiful festival. On top of that, 100 year anniversary of Django birth. And today I'm with, I'm with uh, Bobolo. <laughs> That's how the French say. Bob Holo. Bobolo, yes. Bobolo, Bobolo. So Bob, tell us a bit about um, how did you fall in love with this genre of music, gypsy jazz? Well, I've always been in love with music and I was raised in a musical family. My parents were both musicians. When I was a kid, I fell asleep on piles of coats backstage more times than I can count, you know. Um, but I played music and gigged from about the age of 14 on on the saxophone. But at a fairly young age, I realized that I was never going to quite be good enough to be pro, so I basically gave it up. <laughs> My last concert, I. Uh, at the University of Idaho, I opened for Lionel Hampton, who was funding the School of Music there. And after that, I said, oh, forget it. <laughs> I'm never going to be there, right? Uh, and so I went into engineering. And uh, so I did that for many years. About 25 years later, I saw a trio playing this music on a pair of basados in a, in a wonderful little winery with a you know, stone ceiling and brilliant acoustics. Uh, and I sort of had a really strong emotional reaction to it and I stumbled up to the stage and said what is it you're doing you yeah. know? and how, how can I you know get into this and it literally changed my life within a couple of months I quit my nice corporate gig and uh, started designing audio equipment uh, and a couple years after that I and, and I began designing guitars because they're a uh, oh my friend we, is back <laughs> the bees <laughs> And uh, I began designing guitars because they're a great mechanical equivalent of all of the electromechanical things I was learning about acoustic design and loudspeaker design. And one thing led to another, and um, I met you know, Michael Horowitz, who now has begun trusting me with the instruments that he gets when he gets a fantastic instrument. He'll say, Bob, will you go through this for me, please, and make sure everything's copacetic with it. And so as a result uh, of that, uh, I've studied most of the really amazing gypsy jazz instruments that have come through into this country. Wow. And, you know, what an opportunity Michael has provided me with that. And then, uh, you know, like Matthew Chatelon and, and uh, some of these other wonderful players who've come yeah. over and Ramon last year giving me feedback on my guitars. And that's... So between getting to study the old ones and getting the musicians to give me feedback, that's how I got into it and that's sort of how it, how it happens. Hmm. And uh, how many guitar you, you this year you're able to produce and uh, and what's your mark like how uh, mostly in America you sell lots in France or actually sort of most in Europe I mean that's where the big market is for this stuff mm -hmm. um, this past year has been mostly a year of study I've been studying Selmers and Bosados this past year um, studying Selmers and actually going over and looking at the data that I've studied from Bosados I've studied in the past. So I've studied now, I don't know, 13 or 14 Bosados and putting it together and trying to connect the dots. Because when people, they look at these instruments and they say, well, how thick is the top? How big are the braces and this sort of thing? And that's a, a very rudimentary way to look at it. The question is, how does the guitar perform? Why, does it, why is it the, the acoustic machine that it is? And so when you do in-depth studies on these guitars, you know, histograms, studies of compliance, studies of deflection, um, just many different things then you can start to connect the dots and understand what the designer had in mind as opposed to what any specific historical instrument was. So this past year I've built, well I built one for Stefan Rembel, I built one for Alfonso Ponticelli, I built one for a couple of uh, European artists and uh, the rest of it, the year was just study basically. And this coming year I'll be making about, going back to making about 12. Hmm. Interesting. And that's the one Paulus was trying uh, last night, huh? Yeah. I think so, huh? Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. They, they tend to get played when they come here because I, this is how I learn. Right? Yeah. I spend 360 days a year in my shop and five days a year here learning from artists. <laughs> Absorbing, eh? <laughs> it's so true. Uh, but without those guys, I would be. Without those guys, without Michael, without Matthew Shetlon, uh, there's no way that I could improve uh, in any meaningful way and get uh, close to what the old instruments actually sounded like. Yeah. But I think that's what you're so good at. It's because you absorb what with the feedback and you go back and you try to make it make it better so that's that's 
that's the big difference, I think, why the guitar got well, so... Uh, thank you very yeah. much. Yeah, it's, uh, it's the most fun and the most work I've ever had in my life. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. It's three o'clock in the morning, you know, five to seven nights a week. But it's also something that I, I couldn't imagine doing anything else now. Uh, so no regret of leaving. Oh, the... none. Zero. <laughs> well, okay, the big paycheck, yeah. Yeah. I missed that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe one day, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks again, Bob. And uh, what do you think of this wine? I think you know well. Uh, oh, this just, is uh, wonderful. Family. Yeah. Alcine, this is uh, from uh, Adelsheim. Uh, yeah. And uh, the Pinot from uh, the, their reserve, uh, oh. Elizabeth. This is wonderful. Catherine, thank you for hooking us up with this. Catherine is the representative of yeah. Adelsheim. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Yeah. So like I always say, keep drinking good, oh. good wine with good friends and keep listening to good gypsy jazz.